Okay, chapter six is on trigonometry, and uh, we're just going to do three days of review rather than doing the whole chapter because you've already done trigonometry in pre-calculus 12. Now, it's really important that you learn this stuff well or relearn it uh, because chapter seven is historically the most difficult uh, chapter by far in calculus. And if you don't have a good foundation on the stuff we're going to learn for the next three videos, you're going to be in big, big trouble. Uh, this video, the first one I'm doing here, is the most important, and the second one, part two, will be the next important, and part three isn't as important. So this is the one you really, really want to focus on, make sure you know everything. Okay, we better get started, because we have so much stuff to get through here, I'm really fearful how long this video is going to be. So a quick reminder of what a radian is, it's a way to measure an angle. We've, uh, before you got to grade 12, you'd always measure angles and degrees. Then we started switching to radians. It's the ratio of an arc length of a circle compared to the radius of the circle. So for example, here's my circle with the center of the circle here. If I draw a radius, call it R, whatever length that is there, if I travel along here the exact same distance, then by connecting this, what I get in there is one radian one rad. So if the radius was 2, this distance here, the arc length is 2. If the radius was 7, this distance here, the arc length is 7. And then the other thing that was uh, worthwhile looking at is that for a full circle, the arc length of a full circle is all the way around a circle. What's that called? Circumference. And radius is radius. Now what's the formula for circumference? It's pi times diameter or 2 pi r, two radiuses times pi, diameter times pi. Divide that, cancel the r's, you get that the full circle is two pi radians around. Full circle is 360 degrees, full circle also is two pi. Okay, so this is for a full cir circle. With that in mind, how do we convert from degrees to radians? We multiply by pi over 180. So if we wanted to switch 240 to radians, I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. I'm going to do some canceling here. So 180 and 240, 60 goes into both of them. So this is left with a 4, this is with a 3. We've got our answer. It's 4 pi over 3. How do you convert from radians to degrees? Multiply by 180 over pi. So we want to go from 5 pi over 6 radians to degrees. Multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's will cancel out. The 6 and the 180, you can cancel those and divide them both by 6. So this becomes a 1, this becomes a 30. The only thing we have left is 5 times 30, which is 150 degrees. Standard position angles are angles that we draw on a coordinate plane. And we draw them in a special way. We draw these angles so that one part of the angle runs directly along the positive x-axis. This is called the initial side, or the initial arm. And then the other side, other part of the angle, the other arm, doesn't matter where I draw it, I'll draw it up here. This is called the terminal side. Okay, when I've drawn those two sides like this, I can, it, two angles are formed. There's one angle that's right here, and there's another angle that I could measure right there. So what's the difference between them? The red one is a positive. If you go counterclockwise, it's a positive angle. And if you move in a cl clockwise direction, you have a negative angle. By the way, I don't think I made the point, but with a standard position angle, the vertex is at the origin. So maybe I'll just write that there. Okay, now we're going to put a whole bunch of information in here. The first thing I want to do is I want to label each one of these sections. Remember what those are called? They're called quadrants. Uh, so this quadrant here is quadrant 1, and then quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Next thing I want to do is I want to write the degrees of the angles in each quadrant. So if I had a standard position angle in this quadrant, which um, range of angles could it be? It could be from 0 up to 90 degrees. How about in the second quadrant? From 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Third quadrant, 180 degrees to 270 degrees. And fourth quadrant, 270 degrees to 360 degrees. What's that mean in terms of radians? That means from zero radians, remember there's no sign for radians, if you don't see any like degree signs, it means radians. It means from zero up to, remember what 90 is? Pi over two. 
and then it's from pi over 2 up to pi. And this is from pi up to 3 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi. Okay, the last thing we want to do here is we want to write in what the reference angle is in each one of these um, quadrants, but we haven't talked about reference angles yet, so let's come back to that in just a minute. So let's go to coterminal angles first. Coterminal angles are angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side. So an example of that could be something like this standard position angle right here. Right, this has the same, uh, this has initial side right here, terminal side there, and how about this angle right here? Those are coterminal to each other. So is this angle, all right, multiple times around. So there's an infinite number of coterminal angles. You can just keep going around and around and around in either direction you want, but they all have to start here and end at that terminal side right there. So how do you find other coterminal angles? You either add 360 degrees or subtract 360 degrees, or add 2 pi if you're doing radians, or subtract 2 pi, because basically what it's doing is just another spin around. So give two positive and two negative angles that are coterminal to 3 pi over 4. Let's get the positive ones first. So we'd go 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is the same as 2 pi over 1. We want to have a denominator of 4 here so we can add it on. So multiply top and bottom by 4, you get 8 pi. So we're going to add on 8 pi over 4, and you get 11 pi over 4. Great, there's one positive one. What if we want another one? Add another three, 8 pi over 4. So I'll add another 8 pi over 4, I get 19 pi over 4. So here are two positive coterminal angles. Want negative one, uh, coterminal angles? Take the original and subtract 2 pi, or in this case, 8 pi over 4 since we have common denominators. 3 pi minus 8 pi is negative 5 pi over 4. Want another one? Subtract another 8 pi over 4. You get negative 13 pi over 4. So here's your two negative coterminal angles. Okay, on to reference angles. Our reference angle is the positive acute angle, we designate it with theta prime, that is formed with the terminal side of the standard position angle and the x-axis. So what's that mean? Okay, let's draw a standard position angle. I'm going to draw it so the terminal arm is in the fourth quadrant like this. Okay, This is our standard position angle. But if you're looking for the reference angle, it's the positive, so they're always positive. Reference angles are always positive. Acute, which means it's always between 0 and 90, that is formed with the terminal side. Well, this is the terminal side right here. The terminal side of the standard position angle, yep, that's that yellow one, and the x-axis, so it has to go up to uh, here. Oh, well that angle would be right here. This is your reference angle right there. So maybe let's actually start down in the fourth quadrant. We're going to get the reference angles. How do you get the reference angle in the fourth quadrant? If this, for example, this red one was 300 degrees, how would you get this angle right here? In order to get the reference angle, you would take 360 degrees and subtract the standard position angle. Or of course, you could say 2 pi minus the standard position angle. Okay, here's a standard position angle in the third quadrant. So here's our terminal side of that standard position angle, and the reference angle goes from there to the x-axis, so it would go up here. How are we going to get that angle? Well, again, let's pick an angle in here. An angle in here could be something like 200. Remember, this is the standard position, all of this. If this is 200 degrees, how much is that? How would you do it? You'd go 200 minus 180. So the reference angle equals the standard position angle, in this case 200, minus 180 degrees. Or the other way you could say that is the standard position angle minus pi. Standard position angle in quadrant two. This is the standard position angle. Reference angle would be from the terminal side to the x-axis right here. How would we get that? Well, this could be what's an easy number to use in the second quadrant. Maybe 100? How much would this be? It'd be 80, right? How do you get that? 180 minus the standard position angle. So the reference angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the standard position angle, or you could say pi minus the standard position angle. First quadrant standard position angle looks like this. If you want the reference angle, what would you do? You'd go from the terminal side, which is right here, to the x-axis. Well, that's right there. It's exactly the same thing, and that's actually true. 
with the uh, first quadrant, the reference angle is just equal to the standard position angle. So reference angle equals standard position angle. Remember if you were to draw all the reference angles, this is the first reference angle in the first quadrant, this is the reference angle in the second quadrant, in the third quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant, and it kind of makes this lovely bow tie, so sometimes we call the reference angles the bow tie angles. Okay, let's find some reference angles. 200 degrees. Well, 200 degrees is in the third quadrant, so what we do is use this formula right here. We take our standard position angle, which is 200, and minus 180. So reference angle equals 200 minus 180, so it equals 20 degrees. 12.3 degrees is in the first quadrant. Love for its quadrant because what happens? It just stays the same, 12.3 degrees for the reference angle. Now this is definitely very difficult because it's written in radians and we often have big troubles figuring out how big that is. So what you might want to do, I'll admit it, I do it a lot, is switch this into degrees first figure it out and then switch it back to radians. If you do that, of course, you'd be multiplying by 180 over pi. The pi's would cancel, the 9 and the 180 would cancel, and this would become 20. You get negative 5 times 20, which is negative 100. Now, it's negative, so be careful. Which quadrant would we be looking at if it's negative 100? That would go over to the third quadrant. So it would be 100 degrees here, which means how much would the reference angle be there? Well, the whole thing's 180 this was 100, it would have to be 80 more there. So you'd have 80 degrees as your reference angle. But wait a minute, this was in, in radians to start, we gotta put it back to radians. So you need to multiply by pi over 180, and then you could divide uh, 80 and 180 by 20, and get four and nine. So your final answer would be four pi over nine. Some people don't need to switch it to degrees, and if you're one of those people, congratulations, you're amazing. I'll try to do the last one like that, um, 16 pi over 9. Well, let's see. What I usually do to figure out the quadrant is I look to see if it's as much as pi. Is 16 over 9 more than 1? Yeah, 16 over 9 is more than 1, so it's more than 1 pi. It's more than 180 degrees. Let's make sure it's less than 2 pi. Uh, what would this numerator have to be in order to make 2 pi? It would have to be 18. 18 over 9 is 2. So it's just a little less than that. I'm pretty confident that it is in the fourth quadrant. It actually is in the fourth quadrant. So I can do this right here, 2 pi minus the standard position angle. So 2 pi minus 16 pi over 9. This is over 1, so I need common denominators. Multiply by 9, I get 18 pi minus 16 pi over 9, which means my answer is 2 pi over 9. Again, if that was too complicated, just switch it into degrees first, and then switch it back to radians later. It's a bit of a drag having to do that, takes a little longer, but it's probably easier. Oh gosh, now we have to fill in this table? No. Uh, okay, we're going to figure out a whole bunch of our special angles that you do need to know extremely well in this next chapter. So, in a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, this is 90, this is 45, and this is 45. We're going to label two of the sides, the legs. You can label them whatever you want, as long as they're the same amount, because this is an isosceles triangle. The easiest thing to label them would be 1 and 1. Now, if those are 1 and 1, how much is the uh, hypotenuse? Well, use Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared is 1, plus another 1 squared, that's another 1, would equal c squared, the hypotenuse. So 2 equals c squared, which means c equals square root of 2. So our hypotenuse is the square root of 2. Why is this useful? Because now you can fill in all of this row right here. You want to know how much sine 45 is? Well, you know what sine is. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So look from either one of these 45 degree angles, it doesn't matter, and do opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, 1, over hypotenuse, root 2. So your sine is 1 over root 2. Or, if you rationalize that, root 2 over 2. Cosine, it's going to be the same thing. Look from here, adjacent, 1, over hypotenuse, root 2. So again, you get 1 over, one over root 2, which is root 2 over 2. Tan, opposite over adjacent. 1 over 1 is just 1. Now, how would you get these guys down here? Well, cosecant is equal to, it's the same as, 1 over sine. So you would take your sine amount, which is here. It'd actually be easier to look at this one. The reciprocal, as 1 over, is just root 2. Secant is 1 over cos. It's just a reciprocal of cosine. So why don't we take the reciprocal of this, root 2. Cotan is the reciprocal of tan. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Done. Okay, now let's get 60 and 90. 
uh, remember how you do this, you're actually going to cut this equilateral triangle. This is equilateral, all these sides are exactly the same. And by the way, in an equilateral triangle, how much are all the angles? 60, 60, 60, and 60 equals 180. But you're going to cut this thing right here. How much should we have made, how much are we going to make each one of the sides of this equilateral triangle? You might think one and one again, but you're not. Because you're going to cut it here, you're actually going to make them two, two, and two. Why? Because, let me draw just one part of this, gra of this triangle. I'll draw this right here. I'm going to draw that right over here. So, what kind of angle do we get when we cut right down like this? We get a right angle right there. We already said this is 60 degrees. We already said this is 2 right here. How much is this angle? Well, this is 60, this is 90. How much more does this have to be? 30. And if this whole way across was 2, when you cut an equilateral triangle like that, it cuts it in half. This is now 1. The only other thing we need to know is this side here. How do we do that? Pythagorean theorem again. We're going to go 2 squared minus, this is hypotenuse, so you're going to minus 1 squared equals c squared. So 4 minus 1 equals c squared. 3 equals c squared. Oh, c equals the square root of 3. So this is the square root of 3. Awesome, now we can get fill in 30 and 60 very easily. Sine 30, well, sine 30, look from here, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 half. Cos 30, adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. 10, opposite over adjacent, 1 over root 3, or rationalize, root 3 over 3. Cosecant, take the reciprocal of sine, it's 2. Secant, take the reciprocal of cosine, it's 2 over root 3, or if you want, 2 root 3 over 3. Cotan, the reciprocal of this, let's look at this right here, reciprocal is root 3. Okay, on to 60 degrees. So we're going to look from here. Sine is opposite over adjacent, root 3 over 2. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Tan, opposite over adjacent, root 3. Cosecant, reciprocal of sine, which is 2 over root 3, or if we rationalize, 2 root 3 over 3. Secant, reciprocal of cosine, 2. Cotan, reciprocal of tan, 1 over root 3, which is the same as root 3 over 3. Now, I know a lot of people love this method. A lot of teachers love this method with the triangles. Um, but in my opinion, it has a big flaw, and that is gives you these ones very easily, and then you're still left with, well, now how do I figure out 0 and 90? So I'm going to show you a different way now, and this is going to be painful. I'm going to erase, not all of it, I'm going to erase just this. And I'm going to show you another way you can do it. Some people accuse this of taking too much memorizing. But hey, what I just did took a lot of memorizing. So I, if anything, I think this is easier to memorize. It's all based on patterns. So in order to get these rows of the table, you put sine cos tan, 0 up to 90, like this. I'm going to go root 0 over 2, root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, root 4 over 2. If you can memorize that for sine, you're home free because these simplify, right? Some of them do. Square root of 0 is 0, divide by 2, it's 0. Square root of 1 is 1, and divided by 2, 1 over 2. This one, you can't simplify, you're done there. This one, you can't simplify, you're done there. This one, square root of 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Great. Now, how do we get cosine? You take all these values, you write them again, going the opposite direction. So 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. How do you get tan? Tan equals sine divided by cosine. So I'm going to take this one and divide by that one. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Uh, let's go to this one. Root 2 over 2 divided by exactly the same thing, root 2 over 2. When you divide by exactly the same thing, it's 1. one divide, let's go skip to this one. 1 divided by 0. You can't do that, so this is undefined. OK, now these ones do take a tiny bit more work. 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. So that's 1 half divided by, but I'm going to multiply by, the reciprocal. Oh, these cancel. I end up getting 1 over root 3, or rationalize root 3 over 3. Okay, same here. I need to go root 3 over 2, divided by, but I'll multiply by the reciprocal. These cancel. I'm just left with root 3. Now I can finish this off. All I have to do for these is take the reciprocals. So the reciprocal of 0 is, you can't take the reciprocal of 0 that'd be 1 over 0 and you can't divide by 0. Reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of 0 can't do it. 
and go over to here. Of course, I could also have gotten these ones this way, right? Reciprocal of one half is two, reciprocal of this, this. So that's how I'd fill that in, just like I did before. And over here, reciprocal of one is one, reciprocal of zero, you can't do. Reciprocal of undefined. Well, if it's undefined, it must have been a zero on the bottom. So it's a reciprocal, the zero's on the top, which is okay, so it's zero. So it doesn't matter which way you can generate this table, but you have to be able to get this table, and you have to be able to get it pretty quickly. Now before we finish this off, although we still have a fair bit to go, uh, I need to remind you of one other thing, which I don't actually even have on here, and that is a s t c. All students take calculus, or as I prefer, angry Serbs take creatine, more appropriate for our school. And remember, these are the ones that are positive. These are, so in the first quadrant, all of them, sine, cosine, tan, all of them are positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. Tan is positive in the third quadrant. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Now this includes their reciprocals too. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so that's also positive in here. The reciprocal of tan is cotan, so that's also positive in the third quadrant. The uh, reciprocal of cosine is secant, so that's positive as well in the fourth quadrant. Okay, with that in mind, and the table in mind, we can figure out some of these things. Tan, three pi over four. Well, again, you might have troubles picturing that angle, so let's figure out how much that angle is. Let's multiply by 1 over 80 over pi. We're going to cancel the pi's. We can divide by 4, and you end up with 45. And if you multiply 3 times 45, you get 135. So what we want to know is what's tan 135. Well, 135 degrees is in the second quadrant. So tan in the second quadrant is going to be negative. So I can go ahead right now and put a negative in there. Now, if we have 135, that's our standard position angle, is 135. How much is the, re the reference angle? The reference angle is 180 minus that, which is 45. So all I have to do is use my table here, which I'll have memorized eventually, and I'm going to look at how much is tan 45. Tan 45 is 1. Oh, so our answer to this is negative 1. I know that's a quite a bit of thinking, but you have to be able to do that, and again, you have to be able to do it kind of quickly, because you're going to do this over and over and over in this course. All right, next one. Again, I'm just going to keep switching the degrees because I know for most of us we find that a lot easier. So I'm going to multiply 5 pi over 3 times 180 over pi. We can cancel out the pi's. We can cancel out the 3 and the 180 and make this a 60. When you multiply the 5 times a 60, you get 300. Which quadrant is it in if it's 300 degrees? It's in the fourth quadrant. So this is 300 degrees. In the fourth quadrant, is cosecant positive or negative? cosecant is negative. It's only positive in the second. So again, I know my answer is going to be negative. What's the reference angle if this is 300? Reference angle is 60. So I got to figure out what's cosecant of 60. So I look up here and it says cosecant 60 is 2 root 3 over two, 3. So my answer is negative 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, last one here. Um, again, let's switch this. So 10 pi over 3 times 180 over pi. Get rid of the pi's. Cancel the 3 and the 180 and you get 60. If you multiply those, you get 600 and it's also negative. So you end up with negative 600. Oh gosh. Um, remember that means you're going to go around more than once because 360 is the whole way. So why don't we add 360 to this? So then we're just going less than one rotation. So if you add 360 to get a coterminal angle, you're going to get negative 240. Okay, great. That'll work out. Let's do that. So negative 240 would be 90, 180, 270. So it would be right around here. This is our negative 240. Now this was 180 up to here. So how much more do you need to get up there? 60. So our reference angle is 60 degrees. This is in the second quadrant. Is sine positive or negative in the second quadrant? Sine's positive, so we know our answer is going to be positive. And the reference angle is 60, so you just have to look up sine 60, which is root 3 over 2. And we've done it. Okay, some variations on this. Given the point negative 3, negative 2 on the terminal side of the angle, the, the standard position angle, determine the value of all six trigonometric functions. All right, it's not as bad as it sounds. Negative 3, negative 2 is around where? Negative 3, negative 2 is around there. And it says that point is on the terminal side of a standard position angle. So this is our standard position angle. It goes through there. What we're going to do is we're going to make a little triangle here. Right angle triangle when you do that. Now you know how much this is right here because it says it's negative 3. So this is a distance of 3 here. It goes down to negative 2. So this is a distance of 2 here. Well. 
When it talks about the six trigonometric functions, it's asking us to find how much is sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, secant theta, cotan theta of the standard position angle, this red angle. Well, if it's in the third quadrant, which ones are positive? Tan and cotan. All the rest of them are going to be negative. So we can put negative here, 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 and here. And now all we have to do is look at this little reference angle, this angle right here, and figure out our sine, cos, tan, etc. Well, we still need one little piece of information. We need to know the length of the hypotenuse here. No problem. Pythagorean theorem says it'll be 3 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. That's 9 plus 4 equals c squared. 13 equals c squared. Do not put this in your calculator. Just put square root of 13. So this distance right here is a square root of 13. Here, here we go now. We can fill it all in very quickly. Uh, sine of this is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 2 over root 13. I'm not going to rationalize. I don't have room. So negative 2 over root 13. Cosecant would just be the reciprocal. So negative root 13 over 2. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 3 over root 13. Secant's the reciprocal. Negative root 13 over 3. Tan is opposite over adjacent. That's 2 over 3. It's positive. Cotan, reciprocal, 3 over 2. Last one. Find all the angles such that they're between 0 and 2 pi. In other words, you don't have to worry about coterminal angle, co angles that go over round and round and round, and you don't have to worry about negative coterminal angles that have cosine values that are negative. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to think which possible quadrants could it be if cosine's negative. Cosine is positive here. They're all positive here, so it's only 2 or 3. We know we're looking at either a standard position angle like this or a standard position angle like this. Now, it tells us that cosine is equal to negative one-half. Forget the negative. We've already dealt with that when we figured out the quadrants. Just look at this, the one-half. When does cosine equal one-half? Cosine equals one-half at 60 degrees. That's your reference angle. So that means you would either have a 60 degree reference angle in this case or a 60 degree reference angle in this case. If this was the case right here, how much is the standard position angle? Well, if this is 60, to get the standard position angle, you'd go 180 minus 60. This is 120 degrees. If this is 60, the standard position angle would be 180 plus 60, which is 240 degrees. Done? Not quite. How come? Because you see how it says up to 2 pi? It doesn't say 360 degrees. That means your answers have to be in radians. So you're going to have to multiply this by pi over 180 cancel, cancel, divide them both by 60, you get 2 and 3. So our answer here is 2 pi over 3 radians. Similarly here, multiply by pi over 180. Again, you can divide by 60, you get 4 and 3. So 4 pi over 3. These two angles have cosine values that are equal to negative 1 half. Okay, we made it. That was intense. I hope a lot of that you already remembered. Here he comes now.